if that's true and we all have something to share of, of value, of significance, and that we need one another to share that uniqueness with us so that we all benefit, then it makes natural sense that that kind of bottom-up up shift would lead to what we're calling tribes, building and leading new tribes of like-minded people who have a common purpose. So can you talk about um, a little bit you know, more in terms of what you mean by tribes and how uh, our technology is actually also facilitating that? Yeah, that, that's, a, and that's a good question, Fenda. These are all great questions. I, I like talking to you, Julianne. Um, <laughs> uh, me too. Uh, the great novelist Anne Rand wrote at the end of her life, mentioned that she felt like she had wasted a lot of her life trying to impress the establishment. And she wished that she would have just, you know, even more than she did, which is amazing. She did an amazing amount of just expressing what she really believed and and, and writing for her and and her passion and and then letting the tribe naturally form around her passion and what she cared about and spreading her word and her message and her ideas to the world. But so often we make that same mistake where we worry. She wanted so badly for the literary critics of the time and the, the, the big newspapers and the, and the big media and, and the academic elite. She wanted, so, she wanted their recognition. And later on in her life as she became more wise and thought about it, she realized that that had sadly held her back in some ways, that she, that she could have done even better. And I think all of us sometimes fall into that trap. So what we don't want to do is sit around and say, all right, I need to build a tribe. What we want to do, in contrast to that, is realize what is my unique expression? What do I have to offer the world? And the way we find that is where are we passionate? What do we care about? What really matters the most to us? What is, the, what is the great wrong in the world that we just feel like we need to do something about? Well, maybe it's a little wrong in our neighborhood or our community. What are the big things that we really want to do? Is it spreading beauty? Is it creating new technology? Is it pushing science forward? Is it feeding the hungry and clothing the naked? Is it taking care of, you know, helping families? I mean, there, there are so many dysfunctional families that can be helped. Is it liberating the captive? Is it educating the ignorant? There are so many great things out there, and each person will have a unique expression on these things or something like them. The great thing about it is that when you find that passion, guaranteed that there are a number of people out there. It might be thousands. It might be tens of thousands. It's probably millions who share that passion, who share that concern, who share that interest and want to make a difference in the world. And it's vitally important to go looking for those people, to connect with those people, to interact with those people, to make friends with them, and to let the tribes naturally grow. So we don't want to just set out to build a tribe. We want to have a passion, have something that matters. If we can tie it to an entrepreneurial venture, that's even better because it, that gives it longevity and it gives it resources to grow. Uh, it doesn't always have to be that way, though. It can be volunteer work or just something that we do on a smaller scale that still has an extraordinary significant, you know, it depends on our passion. But when we tie that passion to other people who have that same drive or that same interest or those same goals, tribes naturally grow. So we should pay close attention to building tribes, not for their own sake, but to build those things we really care about. And as we naturally do that, we spread these interlocking, these interlocking communities because in any community of something you're passionate about, there's going to be a whole bunch of people who are also passionate about the same thing that I care about, and they share with each other, and these, the strengths of these interlocking tribes is a powerful, powerful force that stands for the new and the better and the progress while so many older institutions, so many big institutions, seem like what they want to do is stand for, you know, just more power and more of the same, more of what we had in the past. They don't really want to change. And even the big institutions eventually change when these interlocking tribes of people with passion start to grow and start to expand. Is that making sense? I'm, I'm, yes. hoping, I'm hoping that, that, <laughs> that people can have this vision in their mind of step A, what do I care about and how can I make a real difference in the world in that thing, whether it's entrepreneurial or, or 
charitable, philanthropic, or, or, just, or just service, whatever it is. And then secondly, who else cares about this, and how can I connect with them? So that's step B. And then step C, over time, as passionate people connect with other passionate people to build things and make a difference, it's important. Taking initiative, using innovation, not waiting for some, some official to announce it or, to, or some government program to fund it, but just doing it. As that happens, then there becomes these interlocking natural communities of people who get online one day and, or every day and they, get, and they look at four or five different communities that they're blogging from or that they're reading the blogs or that they're listening to or subscribe to or radio programs or they connect. And as they connect, they create this incredible power that is a bottom-up power. It's a leadership power from the bottom up, not from the top down. So we're not dependent on elected officials or appointed officials. We're not dependent on people, not that those things aren't important, but this power of from the bottom up creates the shifts that really move society in the direction of a freedom shift. Because when just a few get together and decide the future, the result is always a force shift. But when the people have a real say in it, especially around these interlocking tribes of people who are passionate and care and working together naturally, the power there is huge. Yeah, absolutely. And it's self-sustaining power, as you mentioned, Oliver, because these are organically self-organizing groups and tribes around a common shared interest, passion. They're invested in an outcome or a purpose that they share. And there's so much power in that. And it's much, it's a much different model than kind of the centralized model that we're that we're familiar with. There's there's a lot of power to tribes, and you know I'm I'm reminded of the you know what Buckminster Fuller said. You know you never change things by fighting the existing reality. If you really want to change something, you build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. Yes, and, so, and, Buck, and Buckminster Fuller he he called that synergetics, building on synergy which is this natural thing that occurs when people follow their passion. 